Hey everybody, Marty Mazar. I'm going to do a super fast one today on currency manipulation. I have one in the archives, but I just looked at it, and it's nine minutes long, and I, I'm not going to do that to you today. You just read my, my quick little article there, uh, China and the yuan, U.S. and the dollar, the politician who is claiming that China is devaluing the yuan to get, gain a trade advantage, you know, pushing up the price of the dollar. What's the immediate impact of that? Well, notice this big smile here. This is you and me. This is the U.S. consumer. When the dollar gets stronger and when we go out there and access that global basket of goods, in this example of goods from China, they get cheaper. And when they get cheaper, we have more discretionary income. That means we get to save a little more for our future. And when we save, by the way, we invest in firms, perhaps. We provide capital for them to expand and create jobs. Or we put it in the bank, and the bank then lends money to businesses to expand and create jobs. We, of course, enrich our lives, and then we're going to spend some of that discretionary income at, at you know, hometown businesses, the yogurt shop, the restaurants, the parking attendant, the sporting arena. I could go on and on and on. Actually, the small domestic companies that employ a huge percentage of the U.S. population benefit mightily from trade. And if China wants to do whatever they can to make things cheaper, my, they benefit that much more. So why the big frowny face up here? Why would the politician be unhappy? Pardon my artwork. Um, it's not so much the politician would be unhappy. It's just that the politician wants to keep his job, and he needs a lot of money. Campaigns are expensive. Exporters of big companies, for the most part, have lots of resources and lots of influence, so they get together. They, we call this cronyism. It's a terrible thing, in my estimation. But they say, listen, business is, business is suffering because of this currency volatility, and you know it's costing jobs. People were not hiring, or people were having to let go. People, by the way, who benefit from all this, but this is bad. We need to turn. We want this to happen. We want the dollar to be weaker. We want the yuan to be stronger because we have Chinese customers who we want to serve. Notice the frown. If anybody's being cheated here, folks, it's these. If they're really doing this, and, and there's another illustration where I could I could probably convince you that maybe it's not the way the politician would have you think it is. But if indeed it is happening this way. They're really cheating themselves. They're cheating their own citizens. And, uh, and by the way, there is consolation here for the exporters because why would China do this? Well, they do it to capture U.S. dollars. Well, why the heck would they capture U.S. dollars or want to do that unless they want to buy U.S. stuff, U.S. exports, invest in U.S. assets, which unleashes U.S. capital back into the economy and to, you know, that creates U.S. jobs and so forth. Um, I would say that you know, if other countries want to want to go after the U.S. dollar or want to capture as much of it as possible, that must say something about what we produce here in this country. And so, um, and what would happen if we reverse that trend and, you know, they, that the exporters and the politicians succeeded? Well, of course, then this would go away. And as you can see, just think of what I just said in the reverse. Those jobs that are created and that, that enrichment of our lives goes in the other direction. I, I would say that's not at all a good thing. In fact, I will close with this, folks. Protectionism is never, ever unequivocally never a good thing. It is always about politics and, uh, and what goes on between here and here. And I want you to be aware of that, and I want you to, uh, to vote differently in the future when, 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 or, or to speak out differently in the future when this malarkey comes up. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and listening once again, and I'll come back at you soon. Bye-bye.